What's going on, everybody? It's Frito here for Clickhead. Super excited to talk about this today. As you guys know, I'm a huge Overwatch and Arena FPS fan back in my early days of gaming. So when I found out Riot was making a shooter, I did backflips in excitement. Riot Games, of course, the studio that brought us the MOBA powerhouse League of Legends, has recently announced their plan for gaming domination. At the League 10 year anniversary late last year, they announced multiple in development titles across just about every gaming genre you can think of a card game, a fight game, an action RPG, and yes, a tactical character-based shooter currently holding the placeholder title of Project A. Project A, in a nutshell, is CSGO, but with MOBA abilities, which alone would build a lot of hype, but it's the stated commitment to design that are particularly noteworthy. The announcement trailer and clarifying communication afterwards set high expectations for competitive shooter fans. The gameplay was round-based with an economy system like CSGO, but with hero abilities looking like CSGO with a Riot-esque turquoise sheen over it and a dash of Overwatch mixed in. Alongside the announcement came with it a promise from the developers to focus on some of the biggest annoyances gamers have with similar games in the genre, like low tick rate servers, peekers advantage, hackers, or unbalanced gameplay. Since its announcement last October, we like many competitive shooter fans are all too ready for Riot's jump into FPS, because if the game delivers on its promises, it has serious GOAT potential and I don't think that's an overstatement. This could be the best shooter of all time. There are benefits and trade-offs to their focus and strategy with the game, which I want to go more in depth with, but first, I wanted to break down further information that came out after a few FPS pro veterans tried out the game and evidently had a fairly loose NDA, allowing them to disclose quite a few important details about the title. Just this week, former pro CSGO player turned shoutcaster Henry G posted a Twitter thread filled with good news and quelled many worries gamers had about the potential pitfalls of a title like this. Henry clarified that in the round-based gameplay, the hero abilities were a fun add-on, not overpowered, but complemented to the gameplay in a rewarding way. He states here, in my opinion, these aforementioned classes and their own unique abilities should be seen as tactical utility instead of potentially overpowered spell slash ultimate combinations that other class-based games suffer from. And with little cross examples in existence, we'd assume this is a shot at the powerful abilities in a title like Overwatch. He goes on to say, abilities primarily need to be purchased at the start of a round instead of earned over time with the same economy reservoir as the weaponry. This is a crucial detail that builds great confidence in me that this gameplay will not only work, but has the potential to be truly great. Because really, superpowers aren't even new to the even more realistic tactical shooters like CSGO or maybe even Rainbow Six Siege. Smoke grenades or flashbangs can fully blind your opponent or block their line of sight entirely. Throwing a grenade, all of these things feel normal, but when it comes down to it, they could easily be reskinned to be, quote, hero powers, as Riot has already shown. In the gameplay trailer, there's a green breakable wall ability, which likely functions like a glorified smoke grenade already did, just with slightly more of a MOBA interaction to it. Undoubtedly, Project A will go a step further in this direction, as we've already seen abilities that let you fly above cover to throw a knife, for example, which for sure is a huge power spike but it's a far cry from other games where the abilities are in the forefront instead of the challenging gunplay being center stage. Also, what makes me so excited for this type of system is really anything can be balanced with an economy system. If an ability has greater power, they can have its cost raised to limit the percentage of the game it dominates. For example, in CSGO, cheaper weapons are weaker, but they also provide a bigger monetary bonus for frags with them. That alone sees variety in the gameplay, but also adds incentive to different playstyles and strengths at different stages of the game. With an economy system, there's all sorts of knobs to twist that allows otherwise obnoxious abilities to be made fair, just based on how they're distributed. But as Henry explains it, they add a wrinkle to the gameplay, but don't dominate it. So with that out of the way, the abilities feel powered appropriately and feel rewarding. He goes on to talk about the fundamental mechanics here, saying the gameplay and gun mechanics are super slick and satisfying. On the build I played, we experienced pretty well-balanced 
and varied hitscan weapons that had their own unique spray patterns, which is just like CSGO, of course, and best methods of approach for your situation or position. All classes have access to the same generic weaponry via an economy CSGO fans wouldn't find too difficult to adjust to. Generally speaking, a one bullet headshot with one of the primary rifles with any class slash hero wielding it will do enough damage to take down an opponent. That's an important note that the gunplay is kind of universal and the heroes or superpowers are strong, but a bit more of an afterthought intentionally in the design in the same way that you probably think of a smoke or a flashbang to be so in CSGO. They set up for the gunplay. They don't replace the gameplay like they do in other games. And then after praising the gunplay, Henry G goes on to say that the maps he played worked well and didn't get bogged down in quote flowery aesthetics at the expense of flow, which is the result that you would expect from the likes of the map creator for the CSGO map Cash, now working at Riot Studios for some time. Henry closed his tweet thread saying that he'll update everyone with more info in the future, but left a final bombshell stating that Project A is the best game he's played since CSGO, which is high praise indeed. A similar reception came from the playtest reaction from another former pro player turned content creator, Ron Rambo Kim, who had playtest the game prior to the original announcement. In his review, he echoed many of the sentiments Henry landed on this week, stating that he's normally a harsh critic, but he and the other nine former pros that were in his playtest loved the game, saying it reminded them of the childhood joy of playing video games back in high school. Rambo as well praised the map flow, precise gunplay, movement, and the benefits of limiting hero ability power as Riot has chosen to do. So all in all, a great reception, no? Well, believe me, I'm all aboard the hype train, but I just wanted to remind everyone that unless a player really wanted to burn a bridge, they wouldn't come out and trash the game before release or else they'd get blacklisted real quick. That being said, I do think these players are being genuine and likely many other hardcore shooter fans will be enamored in Riot's new FPS like they were. I'm certainly excited to play it and it may come out as early as this year, 2020. But there are downsides to all the upside the pros have been excited about. Project A, just like CSGO before it, will either be unlikely to come to consoles or not be received well on those platforms that need a controller to play. As much as Overwatch is getting dismissed here, it is the type of game that is approachable not only for far more varying skill levels and skill types, but also in input methods. Overwatch works very well in a controller, whereas these gunplay first precision tactical shooters don't really make sense on thumbsticks. Good shooters for thumbsticks are the likes of the slower, deliberate, and floaty Halo games, or the straightforward and intuitive gameplay of Call of Duty, or like I said, Overwatch, which has a mix of both intense gunplay, but also powerful abilities. So no matter what, the barrier to entry to Project A seems quite a bit higher, but it's likely Riot looks to combat that by making the game free to play. But how that will be received by the casual audience is anybody's guess. Let's not forget that League itself dominated the MOBA market by being more approachable than Dota, and MOBA games dethroned the previous RTS King and StarCraft before it for similar reasons. The more approachable game has always won out in esports history thus far, and there's a chance that a free-to-play announcement from the likes of Overwatch's base game, likely around the time that the sequel for it would drop, could take the wind out of Project A's sales, at least in the eyes of the casual player base. But on the other hand, with stellar gunplay at the forefront of Project Project A as an esports title, the Overwatch League might have some serious competition if it can't wrangle together its format quick to keep the hype and skillful gameplay shooter fans want to see. Keeping in mind that the previous season of the League had almost no FPS elements in the metagame, an oversight that the design of Project A will likely solve at the onset of its launch. Another pitfall you can look to might be the monetization method. Whereas Overwatch is one box price for all content, League is a, quote, free game that requires you to either grind or pay for newer, often more competitive options. League was the original big success story of using the mobile game-centered monetization model of free-to-play in a hardcore title, but times have changed a bit. Not only are there tons of free games, but the expectation of how fair those models are to players has been refined over time, and companies see extreme backlash if they get that aspect wrong. 
Are shooter fans ready for a League-esque model where the new powerful characters are behind a paywall? It hasn't really been attempted yet in this genre, and was a model that Activision wanted for Overwatch, but the developers at Blizzard pushed back against. Definitively saying, no, everything's gonna come along in this game for everybody. So if Overwatch decides to stick to its guns on how it's sold, not go free to play, we're going to see these two strategies clash, where getting all the content seems fair to casual players, but getting in the door for free is quite a big incentive as well. But despite all my comparisons to Overwatch, comparing to CSGO might be the smarter route to go about things because that seems to be where Riot is putting their attention. In truth, I think gamers are all too willing to shell out tons of money for items and games they love, provided they're actually good. And with the barrier to entry being free, casual players can come along for the ride, while the most hardcore grinders of the game provide the whale investment that funds that wide approach. We've seen these types of systems be predatory, but they need not be if done right. Only time will tell. Things are looking up for the shooter landscape overall, no matter the success of the game. Riot entering the space will likely turn heads, like it already has, and Project A's impact will cause competition among developers, which is always a good thing. But given early reports, it's starting to seem like the sky is the limit for this brand new spin on the competitive shooter. I can't wait, and if you can't either, let us know in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave it a like, and don't forget to hit subscribe and click the bell icon so that you get notified when our videos come out. You can follow us on Twitter at ClickHeadsYT for news and updates. That's been it for me. I've been Frito for ClickHeads. We'll see you guys next time.